Hey people, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you my new tempering oven which is part of the heat treating process for my knives. I built this a few weeks ago now. It's something I've been working on for quite a while. I just finally got it finished anyway a couple of weeks ago. I've been using it. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. I've used many different types of ovens for tempering. I've never really found one that I was just 100% happy with. I've used the Bellin toaster ovens. I've even used my um, electric kiln for tempering. And I had a dedicated tempering oven, which is really for keeping welding rods warm, although the temperature went up high enough. And I, I just wasn't happy with any of them. Finally built this, and I absolutely love it. It is awesome. Okay. Um, it's built on, along the lines of the heat treating oven I built. I'll put a link down in the description below to that oven build. It's built just the same, except it's the materials on this, uh, they're not as... They're not as heavy uh, because it's only a tempering oven. We're never going to go really above 300 centigrade. It's, this will probably ramp up to a thousand. Well, it will would ramp up to a thousand, but the insulation in it isn't suitable for that. The construction is really simple. The refractory is a really lightweight refractory. I had which is this stuff, and it's about as heavy as polystyrene. It's really lightweight, although it's only good up to about 400 centigrade. So any, anything other than that, it'll deteriorate and crack. Um, this is my second go at building this oven. The first time I made it, I used the elements from my heat treating kiln, which I swapped out for the heavier elements. So I reused them in this, and I put a two element rig in it. So the element came in, crossed over, and came up to another element on this side. The massive problem with this was, because there was so much element in this little oven, it overshot the temperature really fast. It would overshoot 70, 80 centigrade. It would then turn the elements off and the oven would have to get back down to temperature uh, just by losing heat through the body. And because it's so insulated, it took 15 minutes for it to come back down. As soon as it turned the elements on, it overshot again. And it would do that for 15-20 minutes until it stabilised the temperature. Of course, as soon as you open the door, the elements off again. So that had to be scrapped. What I ended up doing was, because it had these this 2 inch um, refractory on the sides. So what I ended up doing is swapping it out. And I used vermiculite and I just ran one element in. So the element comes in from the back, crosses over at the front here, comes back down and goes out the back. I also fitted a fan assist to the back, which is absolutely exceeding my expectations of it. It's awesome. The thermocouple is there, right in the centre of the oven, right at the bottom, right at the bottom, and that sits just about on the blade there. I could take that down further, but I don't really want it to interfere with the knives, but it's getting a good reading of the temperature there anyway. That's the construction, there's nothing fixed here, they're literally just, I made up a tray, so I made up a box from some, a scrap boiler casing I got from the scrap yard, it had all been thrown in, into the skip at the scrap yard, so I brought all the casing parts home, cut it all up, it's only really thin, as you can imagine, but it's all it needs, so I folded it to make like a U shape, I put all the gubbins in, and then just made it literally made a top put it on and screwed it together just a really simple construction welded a uh, bit of angle iron straight down the side and up just to give me a hinge and again just some little pins a couple of holes drilled through and a couple of little pins to hold it to hold the door on it's controlled by this little um, Rex C100, we, and these are absolutely awesome little um, temperature controllers. They have got an auto tune on them, so you can auto tune the controller to the thermocouple. Great little oven. So, I'm going to switch it on, guys. I'm just going to show you it working. Say so it gets up to temperature really fast. This is set to 240 degrees, it should be. That was my last temper cycle. I want to show you how quickly it gets there. You maybe hear the fan fire up there.
Just the problem with the two element oven was as the heat was as the elements generated heat there was just far too much heat for the size of that oven. So even when it, the elements were turned off they were still giving off heat and just ramping up the temperature way too much. Whereas this seems to be just right. It never really overshoots by more than a couple of degrees and then it stabilises. The fan on the back of the oven is wired through the solid state relay. So when the relay is putting power to the elements it's also turning the fan on and off and on and off. And it's really distributing the heat in that oven. It's getting a beautiful even heat over the knives and cooling the elements down. I don't know if you noticed on this but I kept the elements above, way above, in, sort of in the mid part of the oven, above the knives so that there's no radiant heat hitting the sides of the knives from these elements but saying that these elements never really get to a stage where they sort of emit heat onto the blades because they're, they're only put on periodically um, and they don't even glow yellow so there we are we've just stabilized at 240 and that is set That is awesome, absolutely awesome. I just love this oven. I'll open the oven and I'll show you the fan in operation. What will happen now is, because we're shedding heat, the PID or the controller will start putting more heat into the elements and you will see the elements glow. In reality, they never actually get this hot when the door is closed and the knives are tempering away in there. You see the fan just ticking away as the element receives power. And that is it. It will overshoot now the temperature massively because the elements have had to have too much heat applied. So it'll generally rise up quite a bit maybe 20 20 30 degrees and then the oven will stabilize but in use that doesn't actually happen so it's not a problem anyway, i'll turn that off and i'll show you around it'll only take a minute or so to get back down to 240 there if i open the oven it'll just get rid of some of that heat There we go. I'll gradually bring it back now to 240. Again, it'll take less than a minute to do that. Anyway, we'll switch it off. I'll just show you around the oven. Uh, the box that houses the PID and the solid state relay. The relay has a half inch aluminium plate, which is fixed to, which sits on the bottom. And that's purely to pull heat out the relay as this relay isn't really doing a lot of work, it never gets hot. I've never even get felt that get warm yet, even after the oven's been on for two hours. So it's doing a great job. Put this wire meshing on just to allow an air movement through there, you know. Uh, this is the fan end, or the business end of the fan. Now the fan is from a normal domestic oven. Got this from my friend around the corner who owns a little uh, Hoover and washing machine repair shop. So I got this off him. Now the shaft on it was only short, it was about yay long. And I had to extend that because there's two in inches of insulation on the back of this. So all I did, I spun up another shaft on my lathe with a socket and I pushed the shaft into that and I just applied some super glue. The super glue is actually inside the uh, refractory material so it never really gets hot uh, so yeah I made a, a shaft extension about two inches long which puts the fan about an inch off the back of the oven and that's it just three screws in for the casing these holes here this butcher mark these butcher marks were where the original elements came through and I couldn't be bothered making another back so we just very roughly cut out with the uh, slitting disc, extended that to get the new uh, placements in for the elements. 
elements. There's the element connections there. All well, runs back through to the PID, uh, and it, as you can see, it does an awesome little job. So the oven doesn't really weigh that much. I think there's probably about 30 pounds in weight, and that is it. My new tempering oven, which I have to say has been doing an amazing job at tempering. Oh, the results are so consistent, it's fantastic. That's it, my tempering oven done. I'm so glad I made it. It's much better than all the toaster ovens and other dedicated types of ovens I've had because I'm a, I'm a little bit impatient, me, so waiting 15 20 minutes for an oven temperature to stabilize it just that's why I built this. It does an awesome job. It's just good having the confidence to know that your blades have got a beautiful even temper throughout and you know that the temperature has been absolutely spot on on the steel. Man I tell you for the last I just feel like Bill Murray on Groundhog Day just coming out to the workshop making knives just never really doing anything because of the situation worldwide the global lockdowns and restrictions and so I started going out on my bike a lot more my motorbike didn't really use it a whole lot last year I've had this bike 12 15 years I, I, can't, I actually don't know I'll have to look and see when I bought it I absolutely love this bike GS Len 50 GS BMW I actually bought it about a year before Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman did the long way around on that trip and uh, so when that series came out I really enjoyed doing that because I knew the capabilities of the bike and places you could go on it. Um, so uh, anyway I've been I've been out on it a lot more this year, been out going on little rides and I've been taking my camera with me and just filming some of the footage so just so I can look back on it um, because I just love the ride and the places I go to, the scenery, it's just so nice to you just actually put the footage on the TV and just watch it and it's as if you're doing the ride again, you know, and you just see things you don't actually see on the bike because when you're riding a bike on these twisty country roads, there's an awful lot of concentration you need, you know, and staying focused, looking out for obstacles like sheep and tractors and cars and coaches and wagons and buses, um, which, which are going to hurt you if you hit them, put it that way. So I'm going to include a bit of footage uh, going forward. Every time I go out, I'll uh, I'll edit some of the highlights of the little bike tours and you can have a look and see what the countryside is like around me and no further really than an hour and a half away. Um, it's just some nice rides. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons. See you all very soon. Bye for now.